Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and today we're going to give the Edge visionary outlook. But really, because I'm me, we're going to do this as a cautionary tale, not just a visionary outlook. We're going to talk about it as unpopular opinions. But let me give you a little bit of my background and help you get some context. Uh, I am the CEO and co-founder of RackN. We specialize in physical air automation, so we actually help bare metal be less scary and really change the ROI for running a data center because we look at how data centers are built and automated from a very fundamental layer up. Uh, I'm also the co-host of the latest Shiny podcast, which is the Edge-focused podcast, and we love to talk about Edge and interview people about the Edge, and, and we have a really good perspective on what's going on in the industry as it relates to Edge topics. And so if you are watching this space, please check out our podcast and you'll understand why I'm presenting these unpopular opinions. And, and it's simple, really, because today I'm presenting to the Edge Choir. You all already have an idea of what Edge is and how it's supposed to be and how beautiful our glorious flying jetpacks are supposed to be and delivering the Edge promise of the future. But the reality is you're doing Edge wrong. And my job here is not to tell you how great the future is going to be, but to tell you the future that you should be scared of, that you're not thinking about, that is actually the one that should be keeping you up at night because this is how things could actually turn out is in just a couple of twists of face. And so before I get started, I do want to give you a trigger warning. I'm about to give you some unpopular opinions, and I'm going to show you and tell you things that will get your blood pressure up. And that's good. The purpose here is to be a cautionary tale. Unpopular opinion number one, AWS and Microsoft will own the edge. They're already making big progress here. They own the developers in the core platform and the developers frankly have a bias towards these platforms already. So if you're expecting developers to own the edge and be driving the edge, then AWS and Microsoft already have a significant competitive advantage. And frankly, a large scale monoculture has real benefits to delivering edge value or any value. Think of Microsoft in the 90s. Those are the ways that, that big platforms get built. Amazon and Microsoft will do it. And sorry, Google, I would include you in this list, but you really aren't playing at the edge the way these other uh, vendors are. They already have solutions or they promise to have solutions that will be delivered into the edge infrastructure market. And frankly, everybody in this room should be aware of them and tracking them. Uh, and one of the things about all these, these platforms is that they understand the value of automation. Automation overrides all the other concerns in building these platforms and getting it right is essential to getting Edge right. And so from that perspective, AWS and Microsoft are going to own the Edge. 5G does not deliver Edge demand. I know we think 5G is the answer to all things Edge, but it's just bandwidth, it's just connectivity, it's just radio. It's not the thing that's actually going to drive Edge. It's not going to create applications. It's going to enable them. And so when we look at 5G, it's going to take time. There's a lot of limitations to widespread utility, not the which the people need to buy new phones and equipment. Uh, and we've been overly focused on these public network use cases. A lot of great, amazing edge cases are actually going to surface from non-public networks, right? Wi-Fi and, and captive areas where you don't need 5G. So we need to stop waiting on 5G to deliver silver bullets and expect that 5G is the answer to all things edge. It's not. It's an interesting protocol and it's going to deliver some powerful things, but it's not going to be the thing that makes Edge work or not work. So I know we all think that sitting in this room, we're going to own the Edge. We're the masters of this Edge universe, but Edge is going to happen outside the U.S. The reality is Edge in the U.S. already has too much core infrastructure close to the key cities and the places where you want to deliver things. You could actually just use cloud zones to cover most of the U.S. population. So do you really need to wait for Edge? A lot of people are just building this stuff and, and using the infrastructure that's already there. So we don't need Edge in the U.S. as much as we need Edge in other places. And our regulatory environment makes it really, really hard to deliver Edge as an infrastructure because you have to do it city by city. Think of China, where they can just create a single regulatory environment and make something happen. Uh, that is a significant barrier to any work getting done. And 
let's face it, we have a tendency to overthink solutions um, and make them really expensive. You know, the idea that we're going to just build Edge out of Raspberry Pis, networks and uh, duct tape and bubble gum, it's a very real thing. You don't need $1,000 machines, or maybe you shouldn't need $1,000 machines. You just need inexpensive stuff and software. And we have a tendency to try and overthink how things should go. And so getting out of that mindset is going to be a key to success. Oh, boy. The edge won't be all open source. Uh, open source software is not required to have an API driven in an open ecosystem. Amazon, Google, Microsoft show this in spades. You can have amazing, big, vibrant, healthy ecosystems, VMware 2, uh, Microsoft, Windows, that where people have open APIs and can write great software and applications on top of it, but it doesn't have to be all open source. Uh, don't wait for open source to deliver the edge. It's not gonna, the edge isn't gonna wait for us to create an open source platform for it. Been there, done that. Uh, it's not going as fast as people want it to, need it to. Uh, and the you know idea here is that these CSPs and MSPs are just operating the data center. So nobody is getting upset with Amazon. They're not not using Amazon because it's not open. And this, the edge data centers aren't going to have to be open either to get people who want the utility of that infrastructure to work. Uh, and then just I've been talking about this a lot on our podcast and, and in market. There's a lot of discussion about what it looks like to sustain open source and the edge revenue model doesn't match the open source model, right? We open source uh, monetization often goes buy a lot of consulting, buy a lot of services, fix the stuff. Um, don't buy licenses. Don't scale your, your, your software and your platforms. Edge is going to have to scale really well. And so you have to have economies that go with a licensed style product where you, you have a, a better than linear scale. If it's a whole bunch of engineering and consulting hours, it's not going to work very well for the way Edge works because there's too much potential for manual labor and patching and changing and stuff like that. It's not the model. IoT needs to chase Jevons Paradox. If you don't know what Jevons Paradox is, please figure it out. Uh, in very brief terms, it means that if you make something cheaper, then people consume more of it. Uh, think inexpensive cars driving up the driving that people do or, the in or cheap gas driving up, uh, the, you, you know, increases in consumption of gas. Uh, and the idea here is that IoT needs to be much, much cheaper. Uh, and so it's not about just, oh, I have a lot of sensors. It's actually about exponentially changing the cost of collecting data. The first thing that people need to be realizing is that video and audio are going to be much more important sensors than we think about. We think about video and audio as things that people interact with. Uh, there's a lot of cameras, there's a lot of microphones, and those things are going to be turned into much more interesting data collection environments. Uh, think of people looking at cars to see if the windshield wipers are going to determine if it's raining and how fast. Subtle uses of video and audio with AI, it's going to completely change what we think of as a sensor. Um, and that's an important thing. The other thing is that we can't have Internet of Things integration, additions, management be as expensive as it is. It has to cost way less to add a sensor into an environment. And I'm not talking about the cost of the sensor. I'm talking about adding, integrating, and managing the sensor. Uh, that has to drop exponentially because we really are going to end up in edge in thousands and thousands of sensors, much higher sensor densities than we're looking at right now. Um, when that happens, we hit Jevons Paradox and the cost of adding sensors into an application drops to almost zero and you can start having a house with a thousand temperature sensors. Uh, and this becomes the real driver. Data from IoT is the real driver, the only real driver for these edge requirements. Everything else is going to get lost in the noise um, as Jevons Paradox and IoT hits and we start really collecting data. And this is important not just because there's a lot of data, which people get excited about, it's actually that we want data to stay at the edge and be collaborated with between these sensors and, and decisions to be made locally. That is a transformative change that is completely different than cloud paradigms, which are all about tramboning back into centralized data centers. Kubernetes is not the edge platform. So I know everybody loves Kubernetes today. Its architecture is way too heavy. Um, there's a lot to do, it's a lot to manage, it's fragile and brittle from an edge environment perspective, especially when you're scaling thousands of data centers. 
it's great. I'm not a Kubernetes hater. I think it's a wonderful platform, but we have to be pragmatic. It's new and it's pretty expensive to operate. So in Edge, we're looking at needing necessary alternatives. Uh, storage and networking constraints are wrong for the Edge and Kubernetes. So we, we really don't have a system that thought about how storage is managed in, a, in an integrated, simple way. And networking is managed in a way that works with, with latency sensitivity and networking awareness and latency awareness. All those things aren't baked into the platform. And, and those issues are actually architectural issues that have to be evaluated. And so I don't expect Kubernetes to magically figure those things out in an edge context. It's just a, a hard part of the system. Um, and fundamentally, even deeper than that, Kubernetes assumes cloud infrastructure, which means there's no environmental awareness. It, it doesn't help you know what's going on in the environment around you or where you are, or what your location is, or what the, the capabilities and restrictions you have in the environment. Uh, those are hard problems that are necessary in a lot of edge work so that you know who your neighbors are and you know what's going on around you and you know what the capabilities and restrictions of the infrastructure are. All of those things are very important in Edge and not part of the Kubernetes architecture. You might be able to figure it out over time, but it's not there out on day one. It's going to take some retrofit. Oh boy, and we love to have hybrid multi-cloud in every conversation and we depend on it way too much, but it's not the same thing as Edge. Edge is not one million mini clouds. Uh, it's just not the way we build Edge. It's not how Edge is. It's, it's not just, oh, I have a, th a million AZs and I'm going to distribute it and use a multi-cloud management tool. The needs of those tools is, are different. Um, there's a lot of, of great multi-cloud management tools. Transitioning to Edge is going to require them to think differently and work differently and manage things differently than, than they have to do for cloud. Um, I hope they rise to the challenge. It's going to be an interesting thing to see because ultimately cloud complements edge, but it has different priorities. Uh, cloud is much more about elastic, you know, don't worry about it, compute, use as much as you need, uh, then control the costs. Edge is all about dealing with the operational needs of the infrastructure and being aware of your location and your latency and what you're adjacent to. It's a different set of thinking. There's different resource constraints. And then you have to think about the operational needs of the infrastructure. So Edge is an operational environment. It's very limited. It has to be managed correctly. It's not like there's a cloud provider making all that stuff disappear for you. Um, when we're talking about Edge, we're going to be talking about understanding the operational infrastructure and dealing with that first. You're not going to assume somebody's going to magically sweep it under the rug and you'll never have to worry about the physical layer of the data center. These things are going to be real in Edge environments. And then finally, our commercial model is wrong. Uh, we just need to own that it's wrong. And it's not that we have a model that we're promoting that's that, that we just need to tweak. We just don't know yet. We don't understand the value mapping for the user and IoT interactions for the edge. We're building a whole bunch of trials and tests. And you know, there's a hundred different people who think they have the right model. Maybe one is right, but 99 of them are going to be wrong. So it's, it's a bad assumption to, to think we know the edge commercial model. It's better to assume that we just have it wrong. And it's even more important to not assume that it's a cloud consumption model, that the thing that's going to happen in here is that we're going to take a cloud infrastructure and the way we pay for cloud, which is mostly through egress and network exit, and assume that will work for, for an edge. The, the model is different. The consumption is going to be different. We actually have to optimize the cost models for rewarding resource balances, right? And those models have to match what capabilities and uh, infrastructure and your cost models for cloud. And that hasn't been worked out. I guarantee you it's not going to be what Amazon has from a cost model where they buy machines and charge you on you know, keeping you there, the Roach Motel of infrastructure is not going to work for Edge. Edge is not going to be the Roach Motel where you want to attract as much uh, workload and, and user and data to each Edge location. That will not scale. Uh, so we have to rethink this. We have to start with a little bit more humility about what the Edge commercial model is and then listen and learn and think. All right, so now it's time to take a breath. Um, these are provocative opinions. They, they, I want them to be. I want you to think through how the assumptions that we've had for Edge 
and the way we think it's going to happen aren't right. And so we want to take a second and get back in our Zen and think about what we want it to be and be open to new ideas, new ways of thinking about it, and be open to the idea that we might not have all the answers and the way we think it's going to happen might not happen that way. Because ultimately, it's important to have different perspectives, to have different people looking at this problem in different ways and seeing the same solution, the same problem with different opportunities. That's what's going to make things much better for the edge. That's what's going to make us win this environment. I hope this was provocative and in informative for you. We love to rant and talk and discuss and tear things apart on The Latest Shiny. So this is your invitation to rant cast with us, uh, talk about these issues, tell me how wrong we are. Um, I love to hear that uh, because that's how great discussions are. That's how we learn. And uh, that is a lot of what The Latest Shiny is about, that type of learning and exploration. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about RackN, I will be around uh, today or just visit us on the web. Um, we are very excited about Edge and the opportunities for Edge in helping people build amazing Edge solutions. Thank you very much.